A Picture Book of Cesar Chavez by David A. Adler and Michael S. Adler, illustrated by Marie Olfelstoffer. As a child, Cesar Chavez traveled with his family from one farm to the next to pick beans, broccoli, lettuce, and other crops. After a day in the fields, his back often ached. His hands were sore. Yet Chavez and others who helped put food on Americans' tables often had no tables of their own, no real homes. Later, Cesar, Cesar Chavez would lead the fight for better pay, working, his, working conditions, and health care for families such as his. Cesar Chavez was born on March 31, 1927, near Yuma, Arizona. His parents, Labrado and Juana Chavez, were farmers. Cesar was the second of their five children. Cesar's father was often too busy to spend time with his family. It was Cesar's mom who kept them together. She told the children stories. She taught them values and many proverbs, such as what, do you, what you do to others, others do to you. Cesar woke up each morning and did the usual farm chores. He carried water from the nearby canal, fed the animals, and gathered eggs. Then he went to school. The Chavez family spoke Spanish at home, but in school, whenever Cesar spoke Spanish, his teacher hit him. It's a terrible thing, he later said, when you have your own language and customs, and those are shattered. Cesar Chavez grew up during the Great Depression. People everywhere lost their jobs. In 1938, Cesar's parents lost their farm and moved to California. Cesar's father soon found work for the family picking peas. They walked bent over between the rows of plants. For a full hamper, 25 pounds of peas, they earned 25 cents. When the work on the farm was done, the family moved on. They picked string beans, lima beans, broccoli, lettuce, sugar beets, cauliflower, onions, carrots, tomatoes, cantaloupe, watermelon, and grapes. When the farm boss was especially unfair or when work conditions were especially bad, Cesar's father would say, okay, let's go, and they quit. Cesar Chavez later remembered, our dignity meant more than money. The Chavez family, like many others, had no real home. One winter, with nowhere else to go, they slept in a tent in a woman's yard. The family moved around so much that Cesar attended 65 elementary schools, some for just a day or a week. In 1942, after his father was hurt in a car accident, 15-year-old Cesar dropped out of school to earn money for his family. In 1944, in the midst of World War II, Cesar Chavez enlisted in the U.S. Navy. He served for two years. While on a short leave, he went to a movie theater in Delano, California. The theater was segregated. African Americans, Filipinos, and Mexicans were confined to a section on the right. Cesar Chavez felt this was wrong. He sat on the left and was arrested. In our own way, Chavez said later, my family had been challenging the growers for some time. Now he was challenging a theater owner. After his discharge from the Navy, Chavez began dating Helen Fabella, a young woman from a family of farm workers. Helen worked in a local grocery store, and Chavez went to the store often just to see her. They married in 1948 and soon moved to San Jose, California. They had eight children. <clears throat> in June 1952, Chavez met Fred Ross, who had been sent to San Jose by the Community Service Organization, CSO, to register voters for the coming elections. He changed my life, Chavez says. Ross explained how in the United States, even poor people had power. They just needed to speak out, to vote. Chavez was convinced and went door to door and urged people to register to vote. At first, he was so frightened he couldn't talk. Little by little, I got confidence, Chavez said later. In about three days, I was doing okay. Chavez talked and argued with people and would not give up until they agreed to register. Soon, he was hired to start the CSO chapters throughout California. In 1958, he went to Oxnard and asked the farm workers there to register and vote. They asked him, why is it we can't get any jobs? The jobs were going to workers from Mexico who accepted lower pay. Chavez organized a march. Reporters came and saw Chavez stand on the hood of a car and speak out to the out-of-work farm workers. After a 13-month struggle, the Oxnard fruit growers gave in and hired local workers. In 1962, Chavez left the CSO and formed a fruit pickers union, the National Farm Workers Association, and FWA. By 1965, it had 1,700 member families. California grape pickers were paid about $1 an hour, which was not a living wage. From that dollar, some growers charged the workers who spent all day in the hot sun for every drink of water they took. In September 1965, workers in another union began a strike against grape growers in Delano. Chavez's union joined them. The two unions merged, forming the United Workers Organization Committee, UFWOC. Please watch part two 